Hey everybody, welcome. Share your fellowship today with somebody around the world. It is September the 4th, 119 days left in the year. And I mean it, we got a great big wide fellowship. So send somebody a note, send somebody some encouragement, share a testimony and expand the magnitude of God's love in your life. All right, if you are new here, then subscribe to the channel. I see on the stats that some people are still not subscribed to the channel. So if you have a chance, do that. It does help. And click a like, share this with a friend. Here's your scripture of the day, Romans 3.28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. For those of you that are reading the Bible in a year, today is Psalm 143 to 145 and 1 Corinthians 14, 21 to 40. Here's your thoughts for the day. Don't let go of your dreams. If you have determination and belief in your dreams, you will succeed in spite of your desire to let go. If you doubt you can accomplish something, then you can't accomplish it. You have to have confidence in your ability and then be tough enough to follow through. And with God, all things are possible. Remember that. The difference between the impossible and the possible lies in a person's determination and quite often your faith in God as well. Motivation for today. People often say that motivation doesn't last. Well, Neither does bathing. That's why it's recommended daily. So come back tomorrow and the next day and the next day and join us as we get these fun thoughts for the day. All right, let's go on to the daily history. In 1781, Los Angeles, and shout out to anybody in the Los Angeles, San Pedro, Fresno area that are watching. It's uh, an Indian village called Yangma, and it's founded by Spanish decree on this day. In 1820, Tsar Alexander declares that Russian influence in North America extends as far south as Oregon and closes Alaskan waters to foreigners. Hmm. 1881, Edison Electric Lighting System goes into operation as a generator serving 85 paying customers is switched on. 1915, the U.S. military puts Haiti under martial law to quell a rebellion in his capital of Port-au-Prince. 1945, the American flag is raised on Wake Island after surrender ceremonies there. In 1951, the first transcontinental television broadcast in America is carried by 94 stations. 1998, Google is founded. And in 2019, YouTube is fined $170 million for illegally collecting data on children viewing habits. Here's your personal story for today. Picture this. Now, tourists rarely take great photographs. They seldom make the effort to be at the right spot at the right time, get the right angle, the lighting conditions, the right weather conditions, etc. To capture beautiful outdoor pictures, professional photographers are careful to view the scene from different angles during different seasons and at different times of the day. This is something that can make you wonder if the reason some people don't have a clear picture of the beauty and glory of God is that they make snap judgments. They come to the wrong conclusions about God based on a bad experience somewhere along the line, church, fellowship, whatever, uh, or an encounter with somebody who claims to be a Christian but isn't living like one. You know, the old saying goes, is one person said to the pastor, boy, there's a lot of hypocrites there. And the pastor, he wants to say, well, there's always room for one more. Anyway, uh, they misjudge what the Lord is like and they turn away from him, feeling disillusioned. The pursuit of God involves more than casual observation. King David told his son Solomon, If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. And that's in 1 Chronicles 28. The psalmist said, Blessed are those who seek him with a whole heart. Psalm 119. And the author of Hebrews, who we think is Paul, wrote that God rewards those who seek diligently after him in Hebrews 11.6. To see and know God in all his fullness and glory, we can approach him like tourists. We need to seek him at all times with all our heart. Here's your devotional thoughts for today. Psalm 22, 1. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? References today are from Job 13, 1 to 28 and 14, 13 to 17. 
Sometimes even well-intentioned Christians can hold a simplistic view of God. For example, we might hear a sports star claim after an upset victory that he had prayed and knew that the Lord would give him the victory, as if God chooses sides in the sporting match. Now it's entirely right to give God the glory for true miracles or for your ability to do well or thank you God for all of these blessings and by all means. But the implication here is that God's answer could only have been victory. What if the defeat had been part of the divine plan? Should God care about sport anyway? This is an important point to ponder. Job's friends were no doubt well-intentioned, but they had a rather simplistic theology. For them, it wasn't possible both to be in God's will and experience suffering. Consequently, they ended up being judgmental of those who suffered. Today's verses are actually the middle section of the long speech by Job. In the first part, in Job 12, he replies to Zophar, in essence saying, tell me something that I don't already know. Job knew that God's wisdom was beyond comprehension, and he knew that repentance was the answer to sin. But he also knew that life was much more complicated than his friends were willing to admit. Their heartless response to his suffering provokes some rather sharp accusations. You can see that in Job 13. If they were experienced what he was, how would they fare? Despite his friend's claims, Job knows that he is not sinless. You know, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's a great equalizer. But he doesn't believe that his sin merits suffering. Job realizes that a truly godless man would have no confidence to come before God. Yet, though God may slay him, Job realizes that he has nowhere else to turn. Whom shall we turn to? Where shall we go? Remember the comment of Peter when Jesus said, Are you my disciples going to leave me as well? So again, Job comes before the Lord and asks for a fair hearing. These verses reveal how isolated Job feels from God. Whereas he was once enjoying fellowship, he now feels as if God has become his enemy. In his current state, Job once again laments the frailty of humanity. But for the first time, we find a glimmer of hope in Job 14. Job is beginning to envision a time when he will be restored to God. And this is the first glimpse of the light at the end of the tunnel. And temporary or permanent? Ruth 1 verses 2 to 4. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the name of his sons Melan and Chilron, the Ephraites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left with her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab, and the name of one of them was Orpah, and the other was Ruth. And they dwelt there about 10 years. Time has a way of slipping away quickly. Perhaps perhaps you've heard somebody say, hey, I'm 56 and I'm middle-aged. Well, you know, the wife or somebody's going to quickly correct you. Hey, how many people do you know that are 112? Time slipped by as well for the family of Elimelech as well. Ruth 1.1 indicates that Elimelech moved his family to Moab with the intent to sojourn there. That's just kind of a uh, an idea that it's a temporary stay, kind of like we are sojourning here on earth, temporary. Life living forever, ruling and reigning with Christ is the ultimate goal. Amen? And so Elimelech hadn't intended to remain in the land, only to visit a short time until the famine was over. But verse 4 reveals that before they knew it, they'd been in the land for 10 years. The sons had gone there as young men and grown up, married local women, and eventually passed away, as had their father. Sometimes we intend for situations to be only temporary. We think, well, just as soon as the kids have finished high school, we'll start tithing again. Or perhaps you reason, as soon as we get through a busy period of work, I'll get back to having daily prayer time. But days turn into weeks, weeks into months, and before you know it, circumstances that were only going to be temporary have become a way of life. Now, have you allowed something that was intended as temporary to become permanent? You know, is it now become a fixture in your life? Have you been waiting for a more convenient time to do what you know you should be doing now? Uh, If time has slipped away for you, don't linger another day. 
in a distant land. If you're not where you should be, this is the day to do something about it. As I've always said, if you're listening to this, you're probably on track and keep coming back each day. And that concludes today. We'll get on to the fun facts, a couple of recycle ones. You might have heard these before. Raindrops aren't actually teardrop shape. They're actually rounded at the top and flat at the bottom. And any free-moving liquid in outer space will actually form into a sphere, and that's because of surface tension. Here's your closing thought. Lord, help me to always remember I have a limitless capacity to be blessed. Amen to that. All right, I know some of you are waiting for that joke. Well, let's see how you like it. A middle management executive has to take on some sport by his doctor's orders. So he decides to play tennis. Well, after a few weeks, his secretary asks him, Hey, how you doing? Oh, it's going fine. When I'm out on the court, I see the ball speeding towards me, and my brain immediately says, To the corner, to the backhand, to the net, smash, go back. Oh, wow, that's pretty exciting. Uh, what happens then? Well, my body says, Who, me? Don't talk nonsense. <laughs> that's all I got. Thanks for coming. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.